Hey folks, another Broken Meeple review, and this time it's The Ancient World 2.0, effectively second edition from Ryan Lockett and Red Raven Games. Now, it's no shock to everybody that uh, I do have a bit of a thing for some Ryan Lockett games. Yes, and um, that one too, and uh, yes, yeah, yeah, I get the point, all right? Yeah, basically, I do like his games. It's not to say that I love every single one of them, and certainly I remember playing a Red Raven game what was it called? An Eight Minute Empire? Ugh, can't stand that one. But what I do love are these ones where he's got this kind of style of artwork because he does everything himself. Design, publish, artwork, the works. He does it all himself. And I love this gorgeous style of artwork that he uses. It's so beautiful. And this game is no exception. In the ancient world, you are basically taking control of a faction. And the idea is, is that these titans, these giant monsters have been beast, beating down on you for ages and eventually all your factions have gone, right, enough is enough, we're going to fight back. So all these tribes that were effectively fighting against them before, you're trying to rally them together under your banner in order to fight back the titans and gain yourself some renown. I think it's renown or glory, it's one of those, basically victory points <laughs> at the end of the day. And as a result, you need to hire a military. So you're grabbing these military cards and some of them you'll use, they need money to pay them, but once they retire, their experience goes underneath your other military cards so they get better and better, like they stack bonuses on your other military, a cool concept. But you're also building up a cityscape. So you've got your faction board and you can build city cards that give you some special abilities or just points. But the main objective that you're doing is you're trying to get sets of the different tribe banners. You know, blue, red, green, and purple. And the idea is, is that you can get set collection bonuses for those banners. You might diversify and get a little bit of each for some points each, or you might focus on one or two colors and try and max them out entirely. The titans that you beat up, you know, all have damage abilities. You know, they hurt your cities. They, you know, beat up your buildings. You've got to go repair them but also by killing the titans, you'll get a bonus as well as the banners on top of it. You can see clearly what banners a building or a titan is gonna give you. You can even attack a titan on someone else's board because while you're attacking these other titans, there is one constantly on your city, constantly like, hmm, if you don't take care of me by the end of the round, you're gonna to have to suffer some damage because I'm literally there going stompy stomp stomp all over your, all over your various things. It's definitely, you can already tell as I explain this, it's wonderfully thematic. You know, at the you know, at its core, you're collecting sets of banners and you're doing it by a mixture of tableau building, dice rolling, and in some respect, you know, worker placement. You have nobles of different values, you put them on spots to trigger actions, but whether you can go on the space is determined by whether you can afford the cost of paying against someone else's noble who happens well, citizen, I think it's called not noble, that happens to have a higher value than you. So mechanically that's what you're doing. But theme-wise, it's nice and rich, and a lot of that just comes from the aesthetics. Your board, the you know the Titan cards, the building cards. It looks colourful, bright, gorgeous. It pops off every table that it's on. When I bring it out, there's always people walking past, going, mm, you know, this is like pretty good. And you know, come on, fair credit to the guy. He does wonderful artwork. The graphic design is simple to tell, you know, you can easily see what the iconography is, it's not complicated, but that's not to say that this is a simple game. It's quite involved. There's not a huge amount of rules, but you do have one or two fiddly aspects to worry about with dealing with like the Titan combat and how certain things on, you know, the end of round sequence, which it could be better explained in the rulebook. I think it's not the best rulebook I've seen, but it will only take you a one play to sort of hone in, oh yeah, yeah, that's how that's supposed to work or whatever, and then you should be on your way. But when I was reading the rule book, it did feel a little bit text heavy. Not enough pictorial representations of what was going on. So, you know, maybe a slight tip there, Ryan. But, you know, all in all, it's not a bad rule book. It's just, you're gonna be reading a bit of text and maybe having to sort of picture things on the board in front of you while you're doing it. It's certainly not one that you're gonna, I don't advise doing this as a kind of, right, I've just unwrapped it out of its shrink, now let's play straight from the rule book. Not recommended, all right? I suggest one of you gets to grip with the rules first. 
And on top of it not necessarily being the simplest game to learn in a sense, it's also quite thinky as you're going through because you've got a lot of different options. I mean, what, what are you going to do? Are you going to build a ton of buildings and get your points that way with special abilities? You know, where are you going to get the money? Do you have enough nobles? Should you go out and get more nobles later on? Are you going to explore the a deck of cards which gives you end game scoring bonuses? Are you going to look at that at some stage? What are you going to do about this Titan in front of you? Are you going to get some military? What military? Cheap military that's you're just going to retire after one use or some rock hard solid squad that happens to you know give you a ton of bonuses are you going to pay them over and over again to use them because they do cost more and more as you go through how big's your city i need a district card so i can add more do i want that district card or maybe that one that's a different ability there's a lot to think about which is a good thing but it doesn't feel to the limit of being overwhelming you know, I'm not sitting there with analysis paralysis going like, oh, I can't decide what it is I need to do. No, if you're thinking on the, each other's turn, when it gets back round to you, you should know what it is you want. I want to get another citizen. I want to get a military card. Someone might beat you to it or stick a noble down. Have you factored in the cost? Maybe, maybe not. But at least you'll maybe have a backup plan. But we're not talking huge, massive amounts of options that are going to send like new players completely off the guard. If you're used to this sort of med I would call it medium weight. If you're used to that kind of level of game, you should be all right with this. So artwork off the charts, right down to the little uh, Easter eggs that are on little cards. Like, I mean, there's one military card that I noticed had two like guys riding like Velociraptor things, which is really cool. <laughs> so I love that Raptors. You know, theme off the charts. You know, gameplay, smooth, pretty streamlined, just with the odd fiddly bit in the book. All in all, it's just really engaging and really good fun. I really like this. Now, some of you are probably thinking, well, hang on, this is 2.0. How's it different from the first one? Have no fear for two reasons. Firstly, from what I, I have not played the first edition. This is my first entry into the ancient world, okay? I'll say that now. But from what I've seen of the changes, I think they're for the, for the better because this does feel more streamlined than what the first edition rules are suggesting. The new resource Ambrosia allows you to do different things if you can collect enough of it. So it's another way of sort of getting that little bonus when you need it. You know, it's expanded, oh yeah, actually it says on the back here, you know, updated art, expanded gameplay with Titans attacking you. That didn't happen in the first edition. Oh sweet, a nice new thematic element, I'll take that. You know, larger boards. I mean, for the most part, it's mainly a cosmetic upgrade from 1.0, but there are some gameplay tweaks in there to make it more streamlined and more accessible. However, if you were a fan of the first edition rules, there are some variants at the back of the rule book so that you can access those 1.0 rules. However, I have read them. You know, there's one in particular where, you know, normally when you go to a spot where someone's got a higher value citizen than you, you pay a gold to the bank, just one. In the first edition rules, or certainly the variant at the back of the book, you pay the difference in value in gold. Wow, okay, gold is fairly tight in this game anyway, that just sounds really punishing. But maybe that's the game you want, in which case, shove the variant in, it's all well and good. Replay value is pretty sweet because you've got lots of different Titan cards, you've got lots of buildings, you've got you know four player boards with asymmetrical powers if you flip them over to the opposite side, which frankly you should do from day one because they're not the most complicated power in the world and they do help steer you along a path, so it is quite cool. Now granted, in terms of like long, long-term replay value, it would help if this had an expansion with more cards and more stuff. No new mechanics, just give me more cards. But there's a fair amount of content in this game to keep you coming back for more. Where do I rank it in kind of Ryan Lockett's lineup? Well, I mean, Near and Far is on the shelf over there, and I do really like Near and Far, but that's a campaign-based game. It's not something I tend to bring out just for a solo visit. Uh, I have tried Islebound, but only with two players, and that wasn't that great. But I understand that that was because I played it with two players. It really needs four, so that's still on my list. Um, I absolutely adore Empires of the Void 2, which is, um, I think it's, uh, yep, down there, Empires of the Void 2. Absolutely love that game, so, so, so good. You know, and above and below is fairly, fairly good as well. So, I, I, I think I put this one at number three in my list, actually. You know, Empires of the Void 2 is my favourite, then probably Near and Far, and then this one. It's a solid game all round. I think if you have never seen the first edition, great. Just jump into this one. You'll probably find it easier to get hold of. Um, it has all of the, I well, say tropes, the trademarks of Red Raven Games and Ryan Lockett. So if you like the way his games look from an, art, um, an aesthetical point, then you're going to have a field day with this one. 
And of course, you know, it's just, I don't know, it's, it keep, it's engaging without being overwhelming and yet keeps the theme rich and strong. You have the other players, you have those titans, you have the one in your face constantly. You know, do I kill him? Do I feed Ambrosia? All right, I'll feed it a bit of Ambrosia. Oh, it's getting a little bit, uh, oh dear, um, I can't feed it enough. Oh dear, I better deal with it. Or somebody comes along and kills it for you. Granted, they get the banner and a bonus, but uh, well, well, they freed you of the banner, they freed you of a beastie that you weren't able to kill, why not? So you've even got a little bit of a mild negotiation in there. I say mild, it is pretty mild. So all in all, really like this. It's a solid game. Minor improvements could be made to, you know, the rule book and, you know, some of the, the, the replay value in it. But all in all, I think this, and it doesn't even overstay its welcome. I mean, 90 minutes is a typical length game, possibly less once you've got less players or, you know, know what you're doing. Two hours at the absolute max, so it doesn't outstay itself for me. I really like it. It's my third favorite Ryan Lockett game. I'm just trying to think what a good rating would be. I mean, do I give it a nine? I'm very tempted. It is a very, very good game. I do really like it. Uh, I think I can just about, yeah, I can just about scrape it. It's, it's just scraping a nine for me. Really solid game all round. You know, I mean, Near and Far is a nine for me and Empires of the Void is a 10 for me. You know, it's a really cool game. You want a bit of worker placement with a little bit of, you know, a little bit of competitiveness, a mild, not, not take that essentially, but with that tension of getting blocked out of a space with good replay value. And of course, the gorgeous, gorgeous, colorful artwork that is Ryan Lockett's specialty. Then this is going to be a solid one for you to look at. So that's it for me. I'll see you on the next Broken Meeple review. And regardless of whether you're killing my time or I'm killing yours or your city's already been squashed, just remember, it's only a game. Take care, and I'll see you next time.